She yes, please. Will you allow Robert Mueller to testify in Congress? Well, I'm going to leave that up to our very great Attorney General, and he'll make a decision on that. But I will say this. Look, the Mueller report came out. It was done uh, at, uh, I guess I'm hearing numbers now, close to $40 million, with 17 or 18 very angry Democrats who hated Donald Trump. And also, uh, everything that they could possibly have at their disposal. There was nobody that was, in the history of our country, more transparent than me. I said, give them every document, give them every person, let the White House counsel testify. I think he testified for 30 hours. I guess they must have asked him the same question, because uh, there wasn't very much to testify about. But I said, let him testify, and let him keep him as long as you want. Actually, when I heard 30 hours, I said, that's a long time. But I let him testify. I didn't have to. I have presidential privilege. I could have stopped everything. I didn't have to give them a document. I gave them 1.5 million documents. I gave them White House counsel. I gave them other lawyers. Anybody you want, you can talk to. At the end of the testimony, no collusion and, essentially, no obstruction. Of course, a lot of people say, how can you obstruct when there was no crime, when there was no Collusion, how can you possibly extract? I'll tell you, but it's worse than that. It's not only was there no crime, but the crime was committed on the other side. So we're protecting against the crime committed on the other side. So after spending all of that money, all of that time, two years, they come up with a report. And Bob Mueller is no friend of mine. I had conflicts with him. We had a business dispute. We had uh, somebody that is in love with James Comey. We like James Comey. They were very good friends, supposedly best friends. Maybe not, but supposedly best friends. You look at the picture file, and you see hundreds of pictures of him and Comey. And with all of that and other things, uh, he wanted the FBI job. I don't know if anybody knows that. But as you know, he was considered for the FBI job, wanted it. And the day after he didn't get it, he became the special counsel. That's a conflict. And we had other things. But that, those are tremendous conflicts. Listen to this. Your judge, call him a judge, is — has a business dispute with me. Your judge has a fantastic relationship with James Comey. Well, he's a part of this. He lied to Congress. He leaked. He's a liar, a leaker. And your judge has a situation where he wanted to become the FBI director. We chose Director Ray instead and told him, I'm sorry. That's, those are tremendous conflicts. Those are tremendous conflicts. And then he puts on his staff almost all Democrats, many of whom contributed to Hillary Clinton. None of them contributed to me, that I can tell you. And it started out at 13. It went to 18. And these were angry Democrats. These were people that went to her, in one case, went to her. It was supposed to be a party. It turned out to be a funeral on election evening, and was going wild. He was so angry. And this man now is judging me. You had other people made big contributions to Hillary Clinton's campaign. They were angry Democrats in, I think, almost all cases. One of the people worked on the Clinton Foundation as just about the top person at the Clinton Foundation. With all of this, they came back, no collusion. There's nobody in this room, including you, if they were — that's you, John. If we looked at you with $40 million, 18 angry people that hated you, and all of the other things I mentioned, they'll find something. I don't know. Maybe John not. Go ahead. Finish Mr. it. Mueller is also friends with Mr. Barr. And as you're aware, Mr. Barr told lawmakers that he didn't have a problem with Mr. — with Mr. Mueller testifying. I'm going to leave that up to uh, the Attorney General as to whether or not I, — I think, to me, it looks like a redo. Here's what's happened. The report comes back. It's perfect. It's beautiful. There's no collusion. Nobody even talks about collusion. Do you know, I haven't heard the word Russia in a long time. There's no more talk about Russia. What happened to Russia? The Russian witch hunt uh, — they don't talk because it was so on collusion, which, by the way, is by far — that's the big deal. Because it was all about Russia. So I haven't heard the word Russia. They don't use the word Russia anymore. So there's no crime. There never was a crime. It was a hoax. It was a witch hunt. So this comes back, and it comes back 
totally exonerating Donald Trump and a lot of other people. This was a terrible thing that happened to our country. Now, I'll tell you what they are asking. They are asking about how did this whole thing start. That's what people want to know. And I want to tell you, I had a, an event last night. A lot of you were there. Thousands and thousands of people standing in a field. They've never seen anything like it, meaning even the press. But it's always that way. We've never had an empty seat. Thousands of people last night. You know what they want to know? How did this whole thing start? It's going to be hard for them to answer that one. Yeah, please. President, are you satisfied with the advice you received from John Bolton? Yeah, John's very good. John is a uh, — he has strong views on things, but that's okay. I actually temper John, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Nobody thought that was going to happen. I, I'm the one that tempers him, but that's okay. I have different sides. I mean, I have John Bolton, and I have other people that are a little more dovish than him. And ultimately, I make the decision. No, I, I get — I like John. I get very good advice from John. John? Uh, Mr. President, as you saw, the Senate Intelligence Committee has subpoenaed Don Jr. That's the Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee. What do you make of that? Well, I was very surprised. I saw Richard Burr saying there was no collusion two or three weeks ago. He went outside, and somebody asked him, no, there's no collusion. We found no collusion. But I was very surprised to see my son. My son's a very good person, works very hard. The last thing he needs is Washington, D.C. I think he'd rather not ever be involved. Remember, he said to me a long time ago when I was thinking about running, Dad, if I could help, let me know. It's not my expertise. It's not something I really like. But whatever I can do, you're my father, whatever I can do. He's now testified for 20 hours or something, a massive amount of time. The Mueller report came out. That's the Bible. The Mueller report came out, and they said he did nothing wrong. The only thing is, it's oppo research. If he did wrong, then everybody standing with me probably, except for John and Lamar. I think Lamar is pretty — I'll tell you, did you ever do oppo research on an opponent? I don't think so, Lamar, right? <laughs> <laughs> And I know John Barrasso never did opposition research because he's a fine, fine man. But I would say 99 percent of the rest of the folks. Are, so they didn't — but they, what they didn't discuss is this woman that came in, who I watched her on the Today Show when it all started. Oh, I'm just an innocent. Well, nobody even knows, although the halls of Congress know her very well, because for years she's walked around all over Congress. She came in. And she left, supposedly, GPS Fusion, goes and meets for a short period of time with my son and some other people. They talked about a subject as very well, you know, advertised and put out, which is nothing. It was a nothing meeting. In fact, Jared left. He said, get me out of this meeting. This is a waste of time. She then went back to GPS Fusion. They were the ones that wrote the phony dossier. Why was she going to GPS Fusion? Why did she go back? Then I heard that Don, for a year, made three phone calls with an unmarked number. They called it unmarked. And this was a tremendous event, because they all knew the fake news. They all know you were fair on that, John. But they all knew that these phone calls, these, these tremendous phone calls, before the meeting and after the meeting, there were, I believe, three, right? They all knew that it had to be to his father. Unmarked, it's perfect. So he reported about the meeting and then reported what happened at the meeting. Except after looking and spending a tremendous amount of time and money, they were able to go back years and find out who made the calls. One was a local real estate developer. The other was a great person from NASCAR. He took two of them, and a friend of Don's. This went on for a year and a half. John, you heard all about the phone calls to, obviously, the father, where I knew — I never knew about the meeting. But the phone calls to the father turned out not to be the phone calls. My son is a good person. My son testified for hours and hours. My son was totally exonerated by Mueller, who — frankly, does not like Donald Trump, me, this Donald Trump. And frankly, for my son, after being exonerated, to now get a subpoena to go again and speak again after close to 20 hours of 
telling everybody that would listen about a nothing meeting? Yeah, I'm pretty surprised.